Uh, Cassandra is really um, a different type of database in this, in this realm. So it's known as a, a column family database or a column oriented database. It's not a columnar database. I mean, you can get in the weeds really quick on definitions. I'll give you the, probably the easiest way to describe it is that it's a distributed hash tree. Just that simple. Um, we've, we've created uh, a great um, query syntax on top of it called CQL, Cassandra Query Language, that gives it an SQL looking feel. So it has a create table, you do selects, you do inserts, updates. So from a data model's perspective, it looks very similar to what relational databases are. But under the covers, it's completely different. And the biggest difference, of course, is that it, the way that it scales and the fact that Cassandra is a distributed database at its heart. Um, it's not something that's tacked on later. Uh, if you look at the roots of where Cassandra came from, it was originally based on the Dynamo paper from Amazon, which is, uh, if you're a computer science distributed nerd like me, um, that was kind of like the seminal text, you know, that was the Magna Carta of distributed databases. Uh, even though Amazon never really built it, they published a paper about it, and it was wonderful because it described uh, a lot of hard problems in distributed databases, like how do you distribute your data in a consistent way? How do you manage all the different failure modes? How do you do things across a land link? Um, it is really, it covered so many bases that there were databases, and this is um, around the 2007 time frame, 2006, there was a lot of databases that sprung up around the Dynamo paper, but only a few really stuck. And Cassandra is one that has, has stood the test of time, more or less. I think I got confused by the fact that it's a distributed database. So how is it different from those document stores? Document databases, like you said earlier, are based on the schema that's basically a JSON document. You throw some JSON at the database, and it says, I'll figure it out for you. So there's not really a schema. Uh, if you throw some JSON at it, you can, do, you can query it, you can index it. But at its core, it's really not around a schema. And the way that you distribute that data is a bit different as well. Uh, some of these are based on master, uh, like the master follower, leader follower um, type architectures where you have this one, one particular server that controls all the rest and the rest follow. So that's you know, similar to like a replication um, in something like MySQL. So the failure modes are a little different. So if, for instance, if the uh, leader node was to die, uh, which happens all the time, then you get into this, okay, now we have to deal with the failover. Cassandra is a different type of database based on partitioning, and so the partitioning allows you to create uh, these ranges of data that belong on different nodes but are replicated in asynchronous real-time mode across multiple nodes. So it's a shared nothing architecture. So there is no leader election. There is nothing that's just sitting there and saying, I'm the leader of this, of this cluster. Every node is equal. But the data structure underneath is typed, and it has real structure, it has real schema. So uh, way from the surface, way cleaner and closer to what you'd expect in a relational database.